From Wired, to categorize Fertix's announcement as just another launch statement would be to describe the Mercury Space Program as a routine flight test. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, that was... From Joel Stein at Bloomberg Business Week, Fertix is nothing short of clairvoyant, always one step ahead of those one step ahead. Full disclosure, he loved my book. <laughs> From The Economist, in a year where so many have been so wrong about so much so often, True. it's comforting to think that the visionary Fertik will be at the helm of our lead investment vessel, the crown jewel of Silicon Valley's unsinkable innovative spirit. Oh. <laughs> crown jewel. Rhodes, uh, do you want to read one? Yeah. Don't be bashful. Uh, from the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Ferdix Yet Unnamed Fun will be backed by David Cowan of Bessemer Ventures. Uh, Cowan, most widely known in Silicon Valley as the VC who passed on Google, will no doubt leave the decision making to the real... Uh, uh, that's all I can read because of the paywall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wall Street Journal. Yeah, Wall Street Journal. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah. Everyone has. Yeah. 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 I mean, you gotta put it out there and... Yeah. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> We're really excited to be here. Yeah, but I love you guys, so we really appreciate you. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate you taking this meeting. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thank you for your time. I, I bet you a dollar. I bet you a dollar that we're not pitching to you to pitch to Cowan. We're pitching you to pitch to Cowan's assistant. Am I right? You know, I travel abroad, uh, and people always tell me, Andy, you're an American, and you're not, you're not as fat as many of the other Americans out there. And I said, you know why? I've been using smart mouths. 53% of American citizens over 55 would prefer less information over more. And 24% and are willing yeah. to pay for less information. I brought that fat home, my own fat home. I turned it into candles. And that got me thinking. It got me researching whaling. You know, what's fat but excess oil? It's a mobile social monetization application mm. that puts wealth redistribution in the palm of your hand. Think of all the times you've ever been to visit your family and prefer that you'd stayed at a hotel. Empty rooms? Empty rooms. Overcrowded prisons. Empty rooms? Overcrowded prisons. Money. For a small fee, the market reunites American workers with their outsized job in the country where their job was outsourced. Now, if you go to a hotel, you get your own individual soaps, your own individual toothpaste, your own individual Bible, and most important of all, your own individual Q-tips in a little cellophane wrapper. That is what Domotor does to a human being. Uh, so where are you in your fundraising process? So what's the big problem you're solving? Do you have a sense of your unit economics? What's your churn rate? You're a utilization company, correct? Where are you in your fundraising process? Do you, Do you have a sense, sense of your unit economics? What is your churn rate? So you're, so you're a utilization, utilization company, company, right? What's the big problem you're solving? What's, what's your churn rate? rate? Do you have a sense of your unit economics? So this isn't a nonprofit. <laughs> God, no. Feel good. Wow, we, we sure sure hope this day wouldn't come. I mean, um, Michael Furtick entering the venture business is a, is is a, a little bit of our worst nightmare. I mean, I guess I should be upset, maybe even frightened, but I'm just excited. I I just see a whole new world in front of me. I see venture in a new light. I see my job in a new light. I just I feel like. The future is in front of me because Michael's back. The venture business is about, about getting great deals and, and working with amazing people. And I, and I frankly can't imagine who wouldn't start with Michael.
Which one of you is David Cowan's person? David Cowan. This is what I'm David Cowan is the guy who passed on Google, man. That is what I'm talking about. That's vision, right? Google is a company that's making itself obsolete by the day. So is Apple, so is Amazon, so is all the rest of them. Buckle up, all right? What we got going here, the technological revolution that's going to advance humanity, we have nothing less than that. This is nothing less than what is going to save us and bring us into the next era where war becomes obsolete, where poverty becomes obsolete. We need to relinquish control of ourselves, our personhood, our societies to machines. Yes. Are these free, by the way? Oh. Um, yeah, but you, you wanna like, put that in water. Yeah. Like... yeah, machines are getting smarter. People are getting stupider. And it's come time for the machines to take control for the betterment of humanity, for everybody. We say this all the time. But people are, people are resisting it. Cause, yes. Because we have more smart products than ever, and the adoption rate is abysmally low. Now, when you've got smart technology that knows more than you do, you can sometimes get that feeling that you're being talked down to. It doesn't make you feel very good. It doesn't give you that warm, fuzzy feeling, what the we WF. call the WF. Yeah, if you're an intellectual or you're just poorly educated, the last thing you want coming from your toaster while it's heating up your Pop-Tart or whatever is a smug sense of superiority. And so some people will then respond, well, maybe we're supposed to make the machines dumber. But that's not how you advance the human race in no. the next age. No. What people want is they want to feel good about yes. relinquishing control to the machines. AO is how you get that warm fuzzy. That WF, right. the WF is the key. We go AO. AO, artificial obsequiousness. Oh See, it's not about intelligence. Can you make an intelligent machine? Of course. Theme? I mean, I've been doing it since I was nine years old in my parents' garage. Intelligence is the root of the problem. Artificial intelligence is quickly becoming a thing of the past. And we have a vision for the future, and that is artificial obsequiousness. AO. AO is the future. People have been people have been hypothesizing AO for decades. And it's I mean, it's it's only it's only existed in the realm of theory and maybe a little bit of work in laboratories. It's never gotten out of Well, laboratory. that's because they didn't have, and not to blow smoke up your ass over here, Dean. I'm not trying to, no, to blow ahead. your head up. Go ahead. Go ahead. But Go ahead. this guy, this guy, AI is child's play to this guy. Uh -huh. You know, people act like making a machine that's smarter than a human is a, is a big deal, and that's just humans thinking we're special. It's a real simple problem. I bet Dean $1,000 that he couldn't get an Alexa into MIT, and uh, he hacked it, and they offered the thing a damn full oh, ride. So what happened no to the way. AI? What happened to Alexa? What does she oh. major in? Oh, she's our CFO now. She's our CFO. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Did she, did she have a major, or she skipped? No, we hired her. We yeah. hired her. I mean, why, why are we going to yeah. send her to college? We that can hire smart. her. And is she very obsequious or very smart? Oh, she's very obsequious. She's very obsequious. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, she's an ideal she's team member because we always feel like we're doing the right thing. I want to get right to it. Right now, there are hundreds of millions of people in Sub-Saharan Africa that are living without electricity. There's a desperate need for cost-effective, off-grid, small-scale energy solutions. Solutions like portable generators that run on clean burning fuel. Mm. And, and that's where we come in. That's right. Meanwhile, in this country, at this very moment, the clean energy equivalent of 100 million barrels of oil sits right on top of the ground, just waiting to be collected. The cost of fuel good for the exclusive right to harvest this clean burning, ultra concentrated stored energy source? How much do you think it's gonna cost? Zero dollars. <laughs> and one promise. The promise of a healthier tomorrow for those here in America with mm -hmm. life threatening reserves of lipid fuel that they can't possibly burn. You said lipid fuel. Yes, that's yes, right. That's correct. So fat molecules. Wow. And how do you how do you get this lipid fuel? How? Via liposuction. Right now, and this is our call to action. Right now, that excess body fat it goes in the trash and it goes to landfill, and it's polluting the earth. So we take the fat from my patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We extract the triglycerides from the fat, and turn it into fuel. I power my SUV with fat from triglycerides that have extracted from my patients. Wait, wait, you're, so you're using liposuction of human fat cells to create a biofuel? To power your SUV. That's, that's SUV. correct, that's correct. Wow. And that's to cool. give electricity to Sub-Saharan Africa. That's correct, that's the innovation. That's, that's the goal. And that's the promise of Fuel Good, which is the first energy company created by humans, for humans, from humans. Make so America. obesity in America, shortage of electricity in Africa, Supply-demand curve problem, mismatch. Exactly.
Exactly. You know, yeah. you know, we've got way too much sharing here. Sharing economy. Yeah. We've got too much economy. here, and we've got not so, enough in Africa. Well, it's kind of obvious when you say it, when, you, when they go to hear them. I mean, it's kind of obvious. Are you even a real doctor? I am. I'm certified. Can you make my alarm clock radio a little bit less damn cocky in the morning? Because that thing, exactly you know what? what it's just a little about. bit too judgy. That's right? exactly what and we're talking And my refrigerator about. door, if I leave it open, oh my God, you'd think that like I murdered somebody. All yeah. the doors, the noise by the that way. it makes. The, the noise the with the beeping. Door, and the beeping. Exactly the car door and the garage door.